my name is Dr. Ruthie or Dr. Ruth Newstifter. I am a sexuality educator and I blog over at exploringintimacy.com, but thanks to the great folks at funwares.com, I'm here answering your questions about sex and relationships. If you have a question that you want to send me, you can send it over to the Funwares folks at askdrruthie at funwares.com and they'll make sure I get it and maybe you'll end up here on a YouTube video. A-S-K-D-R-R-U-T-H-I-E at funwares.com. And let me tell you, this month has been a major month for questions on anal stimulation. You guys are a little anal sex crazy out there, aren't you? All good. Absolutely no judgment here. I think that sounds like a wonderful thing to be exploring. But I want to go ahead and mix it up a little bit by taking a slightly different question this time. And uh, topical, related to the, uh, the events that are going on in the news right now lately. Let me bring it up here. Dear Dr. Ruthie, I have to admit that I'm a little bit nervous. With all of this Twitter cheating stuff going on, I'm afraid that maybe I've been cheating even though I thought it was not so innocent fun. What exactly counts as cheating? Am I safe? Thanks, Ron. Ron, thank you for your question. I think it's an excellent question that men and women and people of all genders oftentimes wonder when a big political scandal hits. And uh, I wish I could say that being in the Washington, D.C. area meant that I automatically know the answer to this question. Um, maybe for us, the answer to the question is it's cheating if you get caught. Um, but I don't think that's the kind of question you're actually asking me. So, um, in brief, is it cheating? It depends on how you define cheating. We don't have a universal definition of cheating. As a culture, we have a universal feeling about cheating, about what's appropriate and what's not. And when one of these scandals, these political scandals hits the news, you know, it's not even just about cheating and what's cheating and what's not cheating and all that sort of stuff. It's also about how we feel about that political candidate or entity and what they represent. Do we want to be upset at them anyway? Do we want to be okay with them anyway? And that, you know, has a lot to do with how we feel about that particular answer for that individual. But how about you when it comes to your relationship and cheating in your life? I don't know if you're in a relationship or not, but the first thing to do is to sit down and figure out where you stand on where the line is for cheating. And it can be really difficult to operationalize that, to really put a specific behavior on one side of the line and another behavior on the other side of the line. For some people, cheating me it can't be anything except hands-on type stuff. If no physical touch happened, it's not cheating. For other people, there's a large emotional investment and definition in there. So-and-so had a telephone or a Twitter relationship, and they um, came to trust this other person and emotionally replaced me as their primary partner with this other person that became a big emotional investment for them. And even though they never had sex, maybe they didn't even talk dirty. Um, that's considered cheating. It's going to differ from person to person. And you know what I consider to be cheating in my relationship and for myself, I sure hope is going to be different from what you consider cheating because you need to figure out the best answer for you. So sit down and figure out what are the major components that you define as sacred in a relationship. Is it the emotional connection? Is it the primacy of the emotional connection? In other words, our emotional connection above all others? Or is it certain aspects of emotional connection that you want to have with one particular partner, but you can have other aspects with other people. Um, is there touching or is there certain behaviors involved that feel like cheating to you? And remember, whatever rules you put towards your sweetie, consider the rules for yourself. You don't actually need to have the same rules for yourself and your partner or partners, but you need to, do need to talk it out and be clear about them. I've certainly seen many relationships where one partner is welcome to do certain things at certain times, but the other partner isn't. And it's not even an unfairness, it's just what they settled on as the best match for them. And, and who are we to judge? Actually, none of us get to say whether these politicians were cheating or not. It's themselves and their significant others that get to make that call over whether cheating occurred. Anytime one of these scandals happens where somebody's been flirting online or whatever the case may be, one thing I wonder about is, maybe that's okay in their relationship. Maybe they've talked about it. Maybe they both enjoy it. Maybe it feeds their erotic energy in their own relationship, and that's how they keep it lively. I don't know. I've never met these people, as far as I can tell. But I do sort of wonder if we're imposing our ideas of cheating on other people when really their ideas of what is cheating is completely different, but maybe not so socially acceptable to express. We do know from research that a lot of people stretch the rules a little bit with cheating in a way that's okay with their relationship. 
they um, have a counter, well, they have the availability to do things that are maybe socially taboo that they've discussed about and approved. I know lots of people in relationships who open it up in one way or the other, whether it's flirting online or whether it's going on movie dates with other partners but nothing sexual, or whether it's actually being sexual with other partners in one degree or another, and they feel that that helps them invigorate and really improve their own relationship. Monogamy is a wonderful, wonderful option. If that's for you and your line on cheating is, is real close to home and, and, you know, real strict rules, that's great. But just know that because you chose that option doesn't make it anything other than an option to choose. It doesn't make it right or necessary for anyone else. Likewise, if you choose to have a little more room for exploration and fun with other people, there's no reason to get a superiority complex over that. Um, just because it's working well for you doesn't mean that it is something better for other people. Um, so we have to uh, we have to respect where each other stands on that sort of situation, and uh, you know let people have the space to make those own decisions in their own relationships. The real problem happens when we don't know how to communicate about it with our partners, so we don't. We're afraid that they have a different definition of cheating than we do, that maybe we're going to get in trouble or we're going to find out things about them we didn't want to know. This is part of the negotiation, the vulnerability, and the emotional intimacy and growth that happens between two people. It's as necessary a conversation as who's going to pay the credit card bill together. Um, it's something that you have to discuss, even if it seems uncomfortable, and you'll be a lot better off once you've made that decision. My name's Dr. Ruthie. I hope this answers your question that you go have a good conversation of your own with your sweeties about what constitutes cheating. Thanks.